everybody. Welcome to Lesson 10 in our first unit of science. This is the beginning of Chapter 3, and this chapter is going to be looking at the role of humans in ecosystems. So, the first thing that we're going to talk about is that human survival depends on sustainable ecosystems. So, what this means is what is our role in ecosystems, and the ecosystems of the natural world obviously support the web of life. So, how does our interactions and our impacts on those ecosystems affect us and the ecosystems around us. So we know that energy flows from the sun and that one species waste is another species food. Okay, So matter cycles through these ecosystems creating a balance and that humans depend on ecosystems to provide for our needs to recycle waste just as other species do. So what is sustainability? Sustainability is the ability of an ecosystem to sustain or bear the weight of their human populations over thousands and thousands of years. Now the Aboriginal peoples prior to the landing of the Europeans were doing this. They were living in a, in a sustainable way and they had been for thousands of years. So a sustainable ecosystem is one that's able to replace the resources that we remove and recycle the waste that we put in. Most of the human ecosystems that we are affecting on a day-to-day -day basis are not sustainable. We are taking out resources way too fast and we are putting in way too much waste. So biodiversity then is the variety of species that you can find in an ecosystem and a strong ecosystem has a large variety of species and complex interactions within them. Every time a species is lost from the web of life, that ecosystem is weakened and the biodiversity lessened. Bigger the number, the species of, the, of animals and plants that you can find in an ecosystem, the healthier that ecosystem is going to be. Okay. So there's three levels of biodiversity. Genetic biodiversity is when each species has individuals with different genetics. These different populations in a species have different genes. To maintain genetic biodiversity then, the different populations of a species must be preserved. Species biodiversity is the variety of species found within a certain habitat. And ecosystem biodiversity is the variety of ecosystems in a given area. Okay, So there's those three levels. Genetic, species and an ecosystem biodiversity. The key to maintaining biodiversity is to preserve that habitat. To date, we are able to name and classify less than half of the species of the organisms in Canada, and we understand the distribution and ecology of less than 5% of these species. What does that mean? That means that there's so much that's unknown out there, but yet we are we're arbitrarily deciding to cut down forests and to pave areas of land to make parking lots and and shopping malls without understanding what's there and how we're really affecting it. According to the various estimates by scientists, 35 to 150 species of life become extinct every day. Most of these vanishing species are, or were, inhabitants of the tropical rainforest. The majority of them are insects or plants, and most of them remain undiscovered by humans at the time of their extinction. So it's a complete guess how many are being eradicated from the planet because most of what they believe is being lost has never been discovered. The vast majority of these extinctions are the result of human activity, most related to resource extraction and population growth. So that's that cutting down of trees I was talking about and the increase of population requiring more food production areas, so forests being cut down for farmland and stuff. So balancing our human wants and needs with the need to sustain biodiversity is a major issue that we face today and will face for years to come. Nancy Turner is a professor at the University of Victoria and she's written a book called The Food Plants of Interior First Peoples and she explains that the indigenous knowledge has only recently been recognized as highly valuable and we've talked about this in chapter one and this stems from a deeper understanding that Aboriginal people use the land as a resource base to provide food and shelter but use their knowledge to prevent overuse and so I mentioned this before as well in that they've been here for thousands of years and they were living very sustainably prior to the introduction of the European people okay so this whole section of the textbook and this unit is to discuss the aims and expand your understanding of the world of science to include that science of indigenous knowledge so, loss of biodiversity in an area is an important problem in our world today, so much so that the United Nations has developed a convention on biodiversity asking all countries of the world to pay more attention to the knowledge of indigenous people. So this is where Nancy Turner's book comes in again. Aboriginal peoples have observed local ecosystems for thousands of years and have passed that information on from generation to generation. 
they have a very good understanding of how interconnected all things are and how important it is for humans to live in harmony with other living things and the environment. Okay, so we are going to talk a little bit more of this. You're already working on an essay that looks at the impacts of human activity on an area in regards to pollution, and we'll be dealing with pollution a little bit later in this unit. But we'll talk more about this next class, so I'll see you next time.